This is the DJI Mini 4 Pro. It's a phenomenal sub 250 gram drone. And in today's video, we're gonna see how good it is for photogrammetry and 3D mapping. And now, since with Waypoint Map, we can actually plan courses and have this drone fly fully autonomously. So throughout this video, I have a couple different scenarios. We're gonna be flying over a very wooded area, which we have right here. We're gonna be flying over some buildings, and then we're also gonna be flying over some fields. And I feel like these three different options here, we should have a pretty solid indicator about how well these drones perform. So there are a couple interesting things that make the Mini 4 specifically exceptionally good for photogrammetry. One that's not entirely obvious is the fact that the Mini 4 is the drone with the largest range of motion for the gimbal camera. So that means that you can actually tilt this camera all the way up to about 60 degrees off the horizon and then down almost 90 degrees. So you have a pretty large range of motion. So first up, let me go over and plan out my flight plan. I'm going to generate out a couple uh, flight plans to follow. For the most part, this is just a tool. Um, I made everything really free. For the most part, we're just going to generate every picture with an action, take pictures, and I think that's everything I want. I don't want to straighten no flight paths. So we're just going to generate out these points, have it land on the top one, and I think we're all good to go. So it's just going to go through, fly this, take a bunch of pictures of the building. So I think we're good. I think we'll download it. So real quick, I'm actually going to generate a couple more flight plans. I know I'm doing a lot of circles, but we can actually do like polygon shapes too. Um, and I'm doing it strictly around these buildings so we can get a little bit of an experiment to see how it works. Also, there's a really nice baseball stadium nearby. So I'm going to go through and fly over that a couple times as well and have that generate around the center. If you'd like to learn how to use Waypoint Map for your Mavic 3, Air 3, Mini 4 Pro, I include a link to a tutorial video down in the description and pinned comment. So now it's time to actually go fly our model. I used uh, Waypoint Map so that it has all the built-in features. So I go through and select it through the waypoints in the DJI drone itself. I don't need a special control or anything. I go through, I can hit next and start the mission and then it will go through and start flying the points. Um, depending on how you have your mission set up, you either need to set up the time shots or you can have it take the pictures automatically. And as you can see, here it is flying over the baseball field first. It's going over and taking these pictures in a regular interval. I think this is actually a slightly different flight plan. I used the polygon tool to make like a whole map because I want to generate a whole map of this baseball field. Um, but in the final result, I'm only doing like the center building. And then also I had to stop because, you know, the battery ran low. So I'm just going to resume the waypoint back where I was. I think it was at around 60. So that way it just starts and resumes the mission and I don't have to fly the whole thing over again. So just hit 60. And then what will happen is you just hit go and start it up, do the normal stuff, and it will then take off and do what it's supposed to. So here we go, loading it in there and then coming over here, here it goes off to... Uh, finish the rest of the mission and here it is flying nice and high fully automatically which is actually really awesome that you can do this on such a small lightweight drone heck you could even get a couple of these and map something even quicker if you really wanted to so now i'm also going to go map the second building which i think this is like a picnic area or whatever and again we're just going to fly the same drone this time it's a circular flight plan so i'm going to get started hit next as you can see, it's just going to run around here, take the pictures. I did these all in 12 megapixels because I found that when you start doing the larger megapixels, um, limitations on what I can do in terms of my photogrammetry machine. Uh, so I have limitations there, but you easily could do this on the 48 megapixel version. So just keep that in mind as well. However, if you do choose to do that, you have to increase the se second interval if you're doing the time shots feature. So you have to actually shoot at like five seconds versus what you can do with the 12 megapixel, which I think goes as low as one. So realistically, this is just me flying around and this is 12 megapixels with a two second interval. So I went through and I flew two other areas that I don't actually have video of me doing it. Um, I flew this park nearby um, that's really nice. And I went through and did this with only the free version of Waypoint Map. So this is everything that you could achieve fully automatically. And this was, as you can see, flown with the free version above. A couple of things that I find very interesting, though, was just the res resolution and depth of resolution on this. Uh, I think they have like a pipe down here or something. And this is where I was standing. So that's a little messed up. But overall, you can see that there is some pretty clear defined ground. Um, the resolution is pretty nice. There is some pretty clear details about like the different spots of grass. And also there is uh, like a manhole cover here. 
you can see and you can actually make that out really well if we set this up to make the model you can actually see very nicely just how well this looks it looks pretty much indistinguishable looks very nice except other than my light stuff here and obviously the trees since it's the middle of winter is not the best time to be doing photogrammetry um, but overall this ground definitely looks looks a little bit better with the points but overall um, really really solid across the board I don't think I see anything too crazy but definitely a great model in terms of just mapping and obviously even the trees came out pretty well but then again if you look at the cameras didn't fly too much over them but again Use doing this in like when there's leaves on the trees would be a little bit better in terms of collecting those. But I think I flew this at 60 meters high as well, and it did a good job with kind of what I covered. So next up is this community center that's nearby. I did this in sunset, so it was a little rougher. Um, and as you can see, if I turn on the camera view, you can see I did just two concentric circles. And as you can see, that looks real like the amount of photos for what you got is pretty insane. Um, especially when you look at like that's realistically like under 50 pictures so I did this in 48 megapixels as well and as you can see one of the things that I thought was really interesting was just how detailed and well the roof came out um, obviously when looking at the cameras and stuff I didn't have any cameras down here so really the only view that I had is like here and obviously with that Sun that glare there's not much that can be seen so if you wanted to make this a little bit better I would have flown down a little bit more. I was worried about some of the trees over here. So you could obviously fly out a bit farther, put another ringer out a bit farther, also have it fly down a little closer as well, because I think realistically this did a pretty solid job, but just some errors in terms of actually being the pilot flying this out. So having some type of maybe a lower pass as well, because really anything that got, like obviously all the cameras are, you can see that they're, the stuff that's missing is realistic where the cameras couldn't see. You could always fly down here, take a couple pictures to cover and um, get some coverage down here as well and then there's this big overhang that's no chance of getting covered <clears throat> but overall I thought that looked really good so this one was done in the 12 megapixel camera setting and obviously you're wondering this is the center right and yet there's so many problems here you got this roof that didn't come out too well um, you got this roof that didn't come out too well you got this roof that didn't come out too well and there's a couple of issues with that well let me show you exactly why I think that is so if we turn on the cameras, you can see this was a perfect uh, run. It looks really good. However, there is one thing to consider is when you start looking at these camera views, specifically ones that should be covering your uh, spot right here, you can take we can take a look at this. You can see there's that tree there, and I'm pretty confident that the reason why there was such an issue is because all the stuff that's missing is also the, the tree branches are really hard to tell especially in the winter when there's they're basically like see-through so realistically I think it's very likely that there's just got confused with all the changing stuff it looks like this is textured and it's constantly changing so it can't make out or discern that so but then you know places where it was I think this is probably more like sun shear and eh, I don't know what happened there that's interesting this should definitely be filled in and then also coming over here I'm realistically thinking it's because of the fact that this was here as well, is that it couldn't make that out. Um, you go over here. That probably threw a wrench into the things, to be honest. But overall, I mean, that should have no issues as well. But I thought also it was interesting that the places that it really didn't get too well, um, like these corner of the soccer field, obviously the lines start getting distorted, etc. But places of really high coverage... Uh, those were interesting to see as well. You got this. I wonder what this box is. Um, the lines in the road are pretty high. Um, my car over here is pretty high. And it did get a little bit of the tree, but definitely for just two, con two concentric circles, that's a lot of coverage, especially at such a low altitude. <laughs> now, here is the baseball field center. Um, if you'll notice, I did actually selectively choose which pictures to include because I did a high priority on the pictures around the center and the low priority on the baseball field because realistically you don't need to worry too much about the baseball field. So I think one thing I thought was very interesting was they had just brushed the baseball field and I thought it was, that was a little error there, um, but I thought it was very interesting that if you look at these pictures you can see that they how they brushed the baseball field 
and it, all these lines in it. And it's interesting that you can then pick those up and those actually register as changes in depth as well. Obviously, I think this one's a little better of an example. You definitely could have gone lower and done a ring uh, around, probably below to get some of these ledges and stuff. But overall, I thought that did a pretty solid job, all things considered. The roof looks really good, actually. Um, it's definitely got some nice depth to it. It's definitely can definitely make out some pretty fine details. However, of course, the model would probably, if you wanted to make a really adequate model, you'd still need to go through and adjust this a little bit more. But overall, I think that's just pretty impressive of the little bit of details that it's able to make out. Some of the things that didn't fare too well, the things that didn't get covered too much. Um, let's see if I can get this. These benches, a lot of this clear slash opaque stuff in these small little poles that move a whole lot during pictures between pictures are not going to work this especially since you always have something blocking it that's going to struggle and that's the only time you're getting pictures of it um, and then a lot of these like poles and stuff are not going to register properly as you can see the bleachers did an okay job depending on where you looked but usually these poles or these tops here did not just because there was a pole here and I, as you can see the pole did not register but the and so that probably messed it up here but overall, I think that looks pretty solid. You'd probably definitely want to do a much more in-depth picture taking process, um, but just for a quick overview run, I think that's a, a pretty solid representation of what it's capable of. And I think with a lot more pictures at a different, more, probably more at a lower angle, you're definitely looking at getting some really nice models. So I guess in conclusion, I feel like the Mini 4 Pro is a really solid drone for photogrammetry especially with the ability to now automatically map with Waypoint. Again, if you want to check that out, that's waypointmap.com or link in the description. But overall, I personally have been using the Mini 4 Pro over my Mavic in terms of just because it's so much more portable and also that extended gimbal range. So thank you very much for watching and hope to see you around.